Hey guys, just getting set up here. <laughs> just put a link on my Facebook here, one second. How's everybody doing? Is there an echo? I hope not. <laughs> okay, let's see. No? Cool. Okay, thank you. All right. Let me switch my Twitch chat to be down a little bit. There we go. So it's not in the way. Okay. How's everybody doing tonight? On your Tuesday evening? Um, so last week we finished up the pirate girl. That was super fun. Um, I still have to pose the squid and add a few things and then render her out key shot. So yes, I've, I'm thinking about starting a new character. Get my coffee going. Um, so yeah, um, and I got, I have a new one ready. Hey Vectoride, welcome. Welcome everybody. Okay, let's see. Let me see what you guys think about. So this is done by Brian Kessinger. It's a Jessica Rabbit, but it's a t with a twist. So she is all steampunked out, which is awesome. I don't know if I can delete some of the background or not. Try that one more time. Yeah, it's too much. So what do you guys think about this? <laughs> you guys like it? Or do you guys have suggestions of what you would like to see? Hold on one second. Plans. Plans made it. How's it going? All right. So what do you guys think? <laughs> this Rabbit's always a good pick, right? Right? I have a, I have a full blown statue of her. I'm going to put her back on the shelf. Hold, hold on with me. One more, a superhero fusion. Ah, that's a good, that's a good call. Maybe, maybe. Um, one second, I'm going to go grab my statue and I'm going to put it back on my shelves back here so you can see it. One second. She, she is so big. I forgot. How, I forgot how huge that statue is. Anyway, I I picked that statue up. A friend of mine picked it up for me at uh, Disneyland a while back. It's pretty cool. The likeness of her face isn't isn't. <laughs> I I'm all uh, critiquing the statue, but it's I I really really like the pose and everything, but the likeness of her, of her face is a little bit off. So anyway, I've always wanted to do one and uh, Brian, I just saw this pop up on Gary Wolf's uh, Facebook the other day. Gary Wolf is one of the guys who, uh, oh, you guys want to see it in the camera? Okay, one second. I'll show you. I keep having to flip my microphone up. Hold on one sec.
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's huge. It's huge. It's like, I don't know, a good two and a half feet tall, I think. So <laughs> it's not small. I mean, it looks small in the background, but it's quite large. So yeah, the likeness is just, it's, it, it's, it's nice, it's appealing, but it doesn't look like Jessica Rabbit. So it looks like somebody's, somebody dressed as Jessica Rabbit. So uh, anyway, Gary K. Wolf, he was involved with um, Roger Rabbit and uh, he posts anything and everything that has to do with Roger Rabbit on his, on his Facebook feed. And I saw this, this uh, drawing by Brian pop up and I'm just like, wow, that is awesome. That would be a really cool collectible and a nice little spin. You know, there's, there's been several Jessica Rabbits done, obviously. Um, I think Electric Tiki did a couple. And I think, uh, I can't remember if Sideshow, I think Sideshow did one where she actually has real fabric on her dress. And um, yeah, Infinity Style. You know, I'll, I, I'm gonna try my hardest to, to make her Disney Infinity-esque, but just simplify it. I mean, she's she's a cartoon anyway, you know, so um, I'll just kind of uh, work it out. And I, I did want to play with some of the textures in like the the bodice, if it's leather, um, maybe a velvety type dress and uh, leather leather boots. So it kind of looks like this, this boot, it could be a, a stocking or whatever. Um, I have, let me show you guys, the, I don't know if I can, XSplit is really strange because it will, it, it won't show you anything on top of like, like I'm showing you ZBrush right now. So anyway, I have a, I have a Pinterest page that is a whole reference of steampunk stuff and there's some really really cool stuff so I might elaborate on the design of the the outfit just a bit and maybe add some more just tink tinkerings and things I don't even know what you'd call it just some more design elements I guess just to make it a little more interesting but keep it keeping it simple at the same time you know um, there are some there's some really really cool things and um, anyway if you guys don't mind, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to take a stab at this. She is she has a lot simpler costume. Is that how you say that? She's she has a way uh her costume is a lot more simple than that pirate girl that I just did, so it shouldn't take 12 episodes to finish. I I hope it would go much quicker. Um and I always want to sculpt something that I would I would want to print out and have on my shelf, you know. So not necessarily to sell, but just to collect and have. I've always wanted to to, to sculpt the Jessica Rabbit. So, um, if you guys don't mind, hello everyone, welcome, welcome, and please ask ask questions uh, as as I go. Like I said before, I'll be blocking this one out just like I did the last one, and maybe maybe even trying some different stuff. So, let's see. I'm gonna unhide my ruler to make sure this is facing forward in space and make sure my perspective is turned off. And this will be interesting because we'll be using the new gizmo that I'm not entirely used to quite yet, but I like it a lot. Okay. Make sure symmetry is on. And I like to work with wireframe on. I don't know why, I just do. So she'll be, she has a really interesting, I guess, rib cage area. I don't know if you guys have looked at Jessica Rabbit in, in the film stills at all, but from her back to her front, I'm, I'm not talking about her bust, but her rib cage is like really, really wide, like th from front to back, it's thick. Oh, Squid Tank, welcome, man. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. This is this is my honestly this is one of my favorite parts of the process. So I'm gonna be blocking her out, and sometimes I like to just see how it goes, you know, and how 
how quickly it rolls. And, you know, once again, um, to plug these brushes, if you're wondering what I'm using, these, these brush, the insert multi-mesh brush, you can grab it on my website, which is uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Mm. <laughs> ZZ crap. <laughs> nice. Waltron, um, I made this ruler and I give it away for free on my website. So what this ruler is, it's a, well, it's, it's three different measurements. It's really one, which is centimeters. It's 20 centimeters tall, but it's also, you can use it like a 200 millimeter ruler, or you can also use it as a two meter ruler. And it's set up to go back and forth between Maya and ZBrush. So you can make a two meter character and use the kind of the ruler to judge how tall it is since ZBrush really doesn't have any native units. And then when you're going to print it out in 3D, uh, usually you print it out in millimeters. So I would use this ruler as the large part of the bounding box. And what you do is when you export a 3D print, you say, I export this out at 200 millimeters and then anything within the box will be printed to scale to that ruler. It's kind of hard to explain, but that's kind of how it works. So, okay. And so you can get my ruler at 3dcharacterworkshop.com if you want. You just get on my newsletter and I'll send it to you along with my brushes and this user interface that you see right here. It comes with this nifty menu. And you can you can use the brushes without using the user interface if you'd like. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Question. I am using a Cintiq 27 inch. Yes. Uh, okay. I have a question, Shane. I'm working on a Corey Smith Damon Wayne. How would you go about making his mask? I made a mask and extracted the geometry, but it's kind of garbage. So uh, I'm I'm not the kind of person or modeler that will mask something off and extract it. Uh, what I typically do is I will I will use this topology brush right here, and I will draw a new topology on top of whatever. Like I would draw the topology of the mask out on the face, and then. I would create new geometry and, and uh, pop pop it off the face that way. That way you can get really clean edges and you can use creasing to get it even cleaner. Because uh, the masking and the extraction, there's several things, several steps you have to go through to make it really clean. And I find that it's just quicker for me to do, uh, just draw the topology on the surface. So I hope that helps. Okay, so just kind of kind of uh, get this going here um, do you guys okay I'm gonna poll you guys do you do you like music or no yes Blands I I did meet Aaron Blaze for the first time last year at CTN that guy is amazing I love that guy he's awesome Yeah, Chris, no problem. If you want to see me do it, uh, just you can watch my previous streams, Pixlogic streams when I, I'm working on the Pirate Girl. I do it quite often. Um, and they're on YouTube. If you just look up Pixlogic Shane Olson, you'll find them. It's just the Pirate Girl that I was working on. I, I did it several times, so you can see, you can watch me do it. Uh, I'll do it here too, but probably not as often, maybe for this bodice um, and maybe for the boots, but I, I just picked up Marvelous Designer on the Steam sale, so I might try that for the for this dress. We'll see. I, it might be too complex. I just might, might model it out. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Let's see. You love music? You play your own music. <laughs> you can control the sound. I've had... I like... I've, I've, I've listened to people say that they like it and they don't I don't know I'm kind of indifferent honestly when it comes to music having it on the stream or not I if it's good music I guess I like it 
But uh, have you guys been watching Joe stream? Joe Pickup, I think his name is. Sorry, Joe, if I botched your last name. But he streams on here as well. And uh, he he has some really good uh, music that is in his stream. Because on these streams, you have to find music that has, uh, it's royalty free. So they don't charge you for the, or they, they don't kick you from Twitch. Because what Twitch will do is it'll mute mute it if the song has copyright. So you have to find non-copyrighted music to do it with. Yeah, Joe's awesome. Copyrights. Wah. <laughs> Ashen Creatures, how's it going? I am blocking out a new character. Finally, after, what, 12, 12 episodes. Okay. So... Usually on females, the widest part is at the crotch line. That's kind of the apex, or the, the, where the, the hip kind of peaks. And then it comes in, and then the knee, let me turn topological on. The knee is kind of, there's this, it kind of comes in. And then it has this little hook, and then it has kind of a this this muscle right here. Then this side is just kind of smooth; it just goes into itself. You can't. Yeah, I didn't start any music. Okay, tell me. I'm gonna try it, and you guys, because it'd be nice for me to listen to some music. Tell me if you hate it. Let me turn it way down. playing. Okay. You guys tell me if this, if you hate it. Yeah, another female character. Kind of biased when it comes to, you know, I, I, I've, met, I've modeled plenty of male characters, plenty. I just, uh, I'm a big fan of pinups and females in general. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I don't know. Yep, Roger Rabbit. Right. I just hit random on this on Joe's uh, on Joe's playlist, so it could get crazy. Let me know if it sucks. She has some crazy feet. Look at that. See how pointy her feet are? <laughs> this music. It's kind of crazy. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. That's all. Victor Felix, how's it going? I wonder how Twitch decides on name colors. Because sometimes, like, like, Victor, your name is green, and I'm squinting trying to see what it actually says there. Okay, let's see. Let's grab this appendage. And this foot is going to be fun. It's going to be tricky. That's pretty much it right there, right? <laughs> Just pointing straight down. I'm kidding. Whoops. Is it random? Yeah, the dub steps. Dropping the beats. It's not bad. It's funny because it's typically not stuff I would listen to. Make sure if you're if you're using spotlight for a image reference, make sure you turn off spotlight projection. If you guys want to know where that is, let me know and I'll show you. Okay. Print it. Yep. <laughs> what 
music do you guys think I would listen to normally? You know, I wish I could get permission from artists to use their music during my stream. That'd be awesome. But still, I don't know how you'd tell Twitch, Hey Twitch, I have permission. New, new metal. Let's see. All right, Pixel, let me check it out really quick. Hey, not bad. It's kind of fun. So Victor, you chose that color, that green. <laughs> it's really hard to read, man. Just like, just saying. Green. All right, her legs are so long. And they go down. Look at how skinny that that ankle is. Just it almost disappears. These feet will come together when I start making the shoe itself. So right now they're just going to look like a paintbrush tip or something. <laughs> so how's everybody doing tonight? Your Tuesday night. Trying to keep this straight and this curvy, and then this curves out and the back straight. Still don't have a tablet. Oh, I'm sorry. Working on a like of a rhinoceros. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, I'm gonna try something with this, the hips here. Just rolling this forward. Oh, come on. Widening it just a bit. Don't sculpt with the mouse. You're killing me. Too far. Yes, a rhino. That's cool. So is it a realistic one or a stylized or what do you got going? Okay, here is something that sometimes I'll do. And that is put the rib cage in place before I put the belly in place to hook it together. And I'll typically um, roll the, the rib cage back and the pelvis forward so they kind of counter each other. Theme sculptures. Oh, okay. Right on. Oh, as real as you can get? Wow, that's a challenge. Normally I don't put the, the rib cage line in there because I'll overlap the pieces. But I just kind of wanted to see where it was at in space. Yeah, you know, I should 
I kind of want to do something realistic eventually. I haven't done one for a long time. I, the last time, I, I, I've never done one in, in ZBrush. I, I used to use 3D Studio Max back in the day. And I did a realistic head of, it was Hugh, Hugh Hefner <laughs> for, a, for the album cover of the Playboy game. <laughs> trying to think of when that had to have been. Like 2000... Like 2004 or 5, something like that. Maybe even 3. I don't even know if I still have that. It's, uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was crazy. <laughs> and he had to approve it. He had to say, yeah, that looks like me. And he did, so that was cool. It was, it was young Hugh Hefner. He was a younger, younger guy. It was just his head. Just a bust. Alright. Um. Working on a head likeness. Tedious. Yeah, measuring. You have to measure every little, tiny little nuance when it's, it's a realistic thing. It's crazy. Like, every little thing. And I am full-time freelance, but I'm not really... I wouldn't call it freelancing because it's basically... I, I'm doing my course. So, I have a course. And I have a... Um, and it, I launched it uh, a couple months ago. And it's doing super well. And I want to focus completely on my course and my students. So, that's what I'm doing now. And it's quite awesome. I love it. And I will be opening that up in a couple weeks again for enrollment. So, let's see. <laughs> no blands. I wish. I wish. <laughs> no, I did not get to go to the mansion. Let's see. Uh, portraits of people from movies you like? That would be awesome. That would be very cool. So what's a regular deadline for a model on my job? Uh, so a typical typical model, probably anywhere from two to four weeks. And that includes the game, the game model as well. There we go, better. Music sounds like a uh, toy, I mean, it's made with toys. Let's see. Um, well, I don't really like to mention the price of it on here uh, because if people watch it back later, the price might change. Um, but it's it's typical with uh, other other courses like it. Like if you've seen courses on on Mold 3D or UArtsy or something like that, it's a, it's about the same price. It's not a gum road. I don't know if any of my students are in here. Usually some of them show up. Actually, I'm going to... There we go. To, no, not fully rigged. I, I typically don't rig my characters. That's uh, two to four weeks ready to rig, not rigged. Walter, if you if you go to my website 3dcharacterworkshop.com and you sign up for my newsletter, then you will be on my mailing list and uh, you will get notified when it comes out again, and you'll you'll get uh, you'll get to find out exactly what it runs. If that's cool.
yeah, that's half the work. Doing all the retopology and the UVs and the map baking and all that. It's, it takes a long time. So. New stuff from 4R8? Um, what do you mean, G Grandi? And welcome to the stream, you guys, that are just joining us. <laughs> Thanks, Simeon King. Sumerian King. Nice to see you, man. Or gal, or lady. <laughs> Never know. Never know. Better be careful. Okay, that's... Is, what's the possibilities of remote modeling for Blizzard or Blur? Um, the possibilities are good if you are good and the team that you want to work for actually does outsourcing that way. So it, it all depends on what they need and if they can't find anybody locally then they'll start reaching out. But typically they want people to move there so they can have direct feedback and influence. I don't, I know that Blizzard does it sometimes, but I'm not sure if Blur does. <laughs> I know, Samaria King, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Yes, I remember you from last week. I just don't, I didn't re recall if you were male or female, because you never know, you know. And Red Hot Wheels, welcome back. Thanks, Waltron. Awesome. So is this... <laughs> oh, now I'm all, I'm all hurt. <laughs> it's, it's all... It's, you're out. I'm done. Okay. Let's see. I, I, I get talking and this goes way slower than it should. I should be done by now. What's going on? <laughs> I'm kidding. It's, getting, it's giving me funky colors tonight. Colors are random. There. Now it's a toy that wobbles in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's how we work. I always find something to blame. Someone or something. Alright. Looks like chewed up bubblegum. Any of you guys go to San Diego Comic Con this last week? I wished I was there. Let's see. Yep, good advice coming in from Ojun. Is that how you say your name? Ojun? Or Zero Jun? Is that an O? Uh, let's see. What's the end goal for this? 3D print, HP for retopo, or a nice render piece? Um, i probably just render it and 3D print it, yes. I will probably not take it to a game res character. Um, the closest it'll get is maybe um, Z remeshed. But probably not a game character. Kind of like the pirate girl. She won't be made into a game character either. Oh, in England. Yeah, sh that's that's quite the trek. Uh, is this better than using the Dynamesh option? Um, oh, it's a zero. Okay. Zero Jun. Is it Jun? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I will Dynamesh this after I'm done blocking it out. So right now, I'm just blocking it out with... with uh, basic spheres and I have dynamic subdivisions turned on if you see the word over here dynamic if I turn that off this is actually the resolution that I'm working in 
right here, but dynamic subdivision gives me a preview of what it's going to look like after I subdivide it. I'm going to turn that intensity down. So right now I'm just kind of working out the shapes, working out the proportions, trying to get it. Um, I'm, I'm barely looking at what's happening over here. Um, I'm, I'm more relying on my just, you know, t my block outs that I've done in the past. And I'm just kind of working, working through it. But yeah, Dynamesh, um, Dynamesh makes things stick together, like it'll it'll make all these parts into one part and I want to keep them separate for as long as possible so I can move stuff around so it continues to be editable and I can fix all the bad proportions and things. So, hope that helps. Asia, wow. There's no cons. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Jessica right behind me is already printed. So I was just showing the stream earlier. This this Jessica behind me is like two and a half feet tall. It doesn't look like it, but it is. Um, but the and I really like it. It's done in. It's um, I'm trying to remember the. Oh, it's polystone. It's made in polystone, so it's really heavy. And um, it's uh, I, I like it a lot, but the likeness on her face is a little off. And I've always wanted to make a Jessica Rabbit. So, um, I just, hey, might, might as well do it during the stream, right? Start a new character. I just hope this doesn't go another 12 episodes. <laughs> so, hope not. She only has like a bodice thing and a, and a dress and some boots and a hat. So, hopefully it's not as intense as that pirate girl. Let's see. Unified or adaptive skin would do the same, right? As... Not re not in, not in the way that I'm wanting to to use it. It wouldn't work that way. So let's see. I if you, if I was using Z spheres, yes, but this is not Z spheres. This is just insert mesh spheres from an, this insert mesh brush right here that I made. So unifying skin would not be the same. Um, yeah, I'm glad you're learning a ton. Red Hot Wheels. Let's see. Quick question, is there a way to soften normals on a low-res mesh in ZBrush? Oh, and you're a big fan. Thanks, Black Barty. Um, is there a way to soften normals on a low-res mesh? Uh, there's not really any way to adjust the normals in, like, directly in ZBrush that I'm aware of. So, let's see. I'll take a peek. Oh, cool. <laughs> I like his mouth. That's fun. Okay. Back to it, back to it. Let's see. Now, occasionally, I like to Z-remesh as I'm going along. Because, as you can see in this torso, if I turn the wire back on, see it's getting stretched beyond craziness. And we can clean that right up by using the Z-remesher. So I'm going to go to Z-remesh. And let's start at about, let's try 2,000. There we go. Cleaned it right up and changed all the colors. Then I'll typically do, but it's still kind of munge this up in here. I'll soften that up. Then I can do a mirror weld, just in case threw it off. Okay. Yep, I I don't add any detail until quite a ways down the line. Okay, now I can I just turn that line back off. Turn dynamic smoothing back on and just keep going. And let's put some uh, shoulders in. Best advice for new sculpting artists or graduates? Is that a question? Typ 
typically never think of details as long as you can avoid it. Yep, major form to minor forms. So I I won't add detail till the very very end. In fact, I'll keep my stuff in dynamic subdivisions until I'm forced not to. Like if I want to do poly paint or something like that that forces me out, that's the only time I'll really go to real subdivision levels. She has some some really uh, like really swoopy shoulders. Like I have a page of um, Jessica Rabbit reference up as well that I'm looking at from the film, not just this. So, all right, this song's got to go. Next. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so, best advice for new sculpting artists or graduate graduates? Um, the sculpting advice is so for trying to get a job or just for sculpting in general. Uh, what's what? Is, what do you? What's the goal here? If you're trying to get a job, that's different different advice than just typical sculpting. Besides just the typical, you know, learn anatomy, that kind of stuff. If, he's, if you're trying to get into games, like I said on uh, the last week's stream, um, don't stop at the high-res sculpts. If you're trying to get into games, you need to actually make a game character and put it in your portfolio. If your portfolio is just a bunch of high-res renders, then you're not going to get a job in games, typically. Okay, let's see. Da, 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 da. Consider the stream part of your personal work? Yes. Do you do any personal work outside of work? Yes, I do. Um, which is interesting, though, because when I was working for Disney Interactive on Disney Infinity, um, that is really the only time, and it sounds what's the word, trite or something, um, but that's the only time in my life where I, I was artistically satisfied enough at work that I didn't feel like I had to do work after, afterwards, if that makes any sense. So, like, my, my art artistic cup was full, <laughs> I guess you could say. Because usually, you know, you'll go home and you'll do your own stuff, typically. But during, when I was working on Infinity, I just, I, I didn't do that for some reason. I don't know if it was just, I was either exhausted from the hours, which weren't that crazy, usually, and then, um, yeah, it was just good. Kind of miss it. I'm going to make her pelvis box shorter. brush to impress the ladies <laughs> yeah I got I got them swarming <laughs> oh, that's funny ladies um, let's see most of the time you just watch YouTube or well this and get the same results Let's see, I'm, lo I'm losing chat here, let's see. 
What do you think of the new Wacom Cintiq coming out, the 32 or the 24? Um, I don't know. I, I haven't tried them, and uh, this is plenty for me. It's it's actually a little too big, I guess. I really liked my 24. My 24 was good, so maybe the new 24, which is a 4K monitor, would be would be great. I don't know. I have not tried them yet. Then what inspires me every day? Um, other people's art. Um, you know, I have to say, my my students have been killing it in in the course I've been teaching. That's like my new hub that I I just visit every single day, not just to give feedback, but also to check out the stuff they're doing. It's I can't be happier. It's or I couldn't be happier. It's very it's just very humbling and inspiring at the same time. Super cool. But I'll go to ArtStation, um, I'll go to Pinterest, and I'll just look for inspiring art. Hopefully see something I haven't seen. Then a lot of 2D artists. A lot. In fact, 2D inspires me almost more than 3D because uh, typically I will because I'll look for stuff to model, you know? And so, and that's typically 2D. I, I love it. So, let's see. And, uh, I'm still trying to get this used to this gizmo here. Let's see, gosh. Build your own, build your own, ladies. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh. What method am I using to create the space mesh? So um, I am. This is called insert multi mesh brush. I'm just using the the insert multi mesh right here, and I'm just inserting spheres and things like that. trying to get this uh, transition from this rib cage to the tummy to work and look a little better. She's got such a narrow, crazy waist. Then what I do is I block out each each piece and then, because that allows me to, uh, to keep the edits going and I'm not stuck. I'll turn this down just a little bit. And um, then I can keep moving everything, and and uh, I'm not I'm not uh, stuck, you know. Like I can adjust the proportions super easy. It's my preferred method. Let's see. Do you ever do challenges just to push yourself to try? I haven't. I've I've been thinking about it. Um, there's one going on at Art Station right now. It's the Beyond Human Challenge. I was thinking about doing that one. I was actually thinking about doing it with, for this stream, but then I, I decided I don't have that kind of time to dedicate to something like that. Um, but yeah, I can't. I, I recommend doing challenges, but I haven't done them myself. Control S. Zizu crap. I have uh, I have auto save on that saves all the time, like every five or ten minutes. So, um, but thank you very much for that. Yes. Let's see. Uh, any of your students' work posted online? Not yet, but very soon. Very, very soon. I'll have a student gallery up on my 
up on my page. I'm gathering all of the artwork artwork right now and I have to reformat them all to fit and look nice together. And that takes a long time, so that's kind of what I'm in I'm doing right now. Hopefully next week I'll have something to show you guys. But uh, I have tons and tons and tons of blockouts that students have done and they've just it's, they're really, really fun to look at and see different peop different students' approaches to blocking out different characters and how they do it. It's really cool. Let's see. Make the big shapes with primitives, then merging everything down together. Yes, eventually I will do that, Komugi. Um, but, yeah, in unless I don't want it to, to be merged. Um, but yes, that's what I'll do, is I'll merge everything via Dynamesh later. There's a whole lot of 3D model dedicated or related software out there. Which ones? Um, I would focus on. Well, it depends on what you want to do. You know, if you want to do digital sculpting, I'd focus on ZBrush. But if you want to do, I even if you're wanting to do game modeling, I would focus on ZBrush because that's kind of where all the studios are are going. But and it's it's one of the more difficult programs to learn. But if you want to learn low poly modeling, like box modeling, I guess you could learn uh, like Maya. If you're wanting to be a texture artist, I'd learn something like Substance. It just kind of depends on what your your aim is. Uh, yeah, beginning student, there's way too many. There are a lot. And like I said with my course, I take you through every single one that we used at Disney Interactive to take you through the entire pipeline, which is majority is ZBrush. It's like 90% of it. Then um, other programs I use, and I'm not going to, going to say what they are right now because it, this is a Pixel Logic stream. But um, there's other programs that I use for retopology, UVing, and baking the maps and things like that. So. Um, and they, I just, I just hop in and hop out of those programs. I don't really spend a lot of time in there. Just they're kind of like a bridge going from one to the other. Okay, let's get going on this guy, girl, lady. But thank you for the questions, guys. It keeps me busy, and it helps everyone. There, there's her head done. So do you adaptive mesh this afterwards? No, just DynaMesh. The only time I ever use adaptive mesh is when I'm using Z-Spheres. And that is not often. I hardly ever use that. Usually DynaMesh. See, these shapes will be kind of wonky until I get them all together, and then I can compare them with each other and work them out. You'll notice me going back and forth quite a bit. And I have topological on, and what that does is that allows me to move objects by themselves. So you can see that I can grab the shoulder, and it won't affect the arms or the, or the rib cage or anything. That's because topological is on. If I turn that off and move it, it will affect everything. And that topical, lo topical, topological will work with any brush. So, like inflate, you can see inflate. It's turned off. I can turn that on, and it'll only affect the shoulder. Or even smooth. It'll work with smooth. So if I hold down shift. I can turn topological on shift and it will only smooth that shoulder. But you want to use it sparingly when you get to high resolution models because uh, ZBrush will slow right down when it when it tries to use topological. So when you do 
when your mesh is high resolution, you can use this uh, mask by poly group instead, and it'll work better. So, let's see. Want to sign up for your character workshop? What do I actually need to do? Is there any costs for any? So yes, it costs. Um, and it's it's too late for the first round, but it's I'm going to be opening it up again uh, in, in the next couple of weeks. Let's see. Um. Like I said earlier, I don't really like to to share what the cost is on online here because um, people can watch the stream later and the price may change. Um, so I don't want anybody saying, "Hey, it was this, and now it's this." So uh, it's I'll just say that it's um, it's it's like uh, like the typical classes that you see, of course, online courses. Um, like with Mold 3D or URC or ZBrush Workshops, stuff like that. It's around the same. And I'm I'm a also adding value to it all the time. I just. I just added a interview with an industry professional last week, and I do um, ZBrush live feedback sessions. And then I add those to the course for all students. So, oh, that's another thing is I'm gonna be doing a workshop at the ZBrush Summit. So that should be announced fairly soon. So practical sculpting or digital for starters? Let's see. Um so my ZBrush setup is different. Um, this is my custom user interface and my custom brushes. And this is my uh, startup project file. And I give all of this stuff away on my website at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. So you can just, and you just sign up for my newsletter and you get all that stuff. And then there's instructions on how to install it. Will that cover all three days at the summit? No, it's just, I, I think right now they have it set up for Saturday morning. Just uh, one three hour class, I believe. I did one, I did one a couple years ago with Matt Thorpe. And that was, that was great. Met a lot of cool people. I'm still friends with several of them. <laughs> Yep, thanks for dropping by, Soul Catch. Take care. So ZZ Crap, are you what's what's the most challenging project I've ever had and why? Um it was what was it? Um maybe no. I'd say maybe the collector's edition of the of the Disney Infinity, just because it was such a t short time frame, and we just had to like hurry and do it and pose it and get it done. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen it. For Disney Infinity 2.0, there was a there was a collector's edition base that had like a a big frost beast coming out of it, 
and it was they just decided they wanted it at the last minute so it was a rush a rush thing to get out and we didn't have much time to do it so I don't know I guess it was challenging for different reasons <laughs> Oh, thanks, Red Hot Wheels. Let's see. It's Jessica Rabbit, and because the questions. <laughs> All the questions, yep. I can't, I can't do anything. No, I appreciate the questions, I really do. I'm just trying to, um, I'm really trying to focus on Just what what makes uh, Jessica Rabbit Jessica Rabbit as far as her body goes, and I think it's just this how how small and ridiculous that waist is compared to her rib cage. And just how how deep the from the front of the rib cage to the back of it is. It's just if you look, if you watch the movie, it's just ridiculous. It's really weird in a good way not typical. Now I, I like to do, I like to build my heads out of two spheres, the, the head sphere and the jaw. Samarian King, that's hilarious. That's so true. Because I was, what I was thinking about is my, when I was working on Boba Fett. He was at the, at the time he was difficult, and then, then it's like, yeah, it's it's whatever char character it is at the time. Nice. That uh, I was checking out that sculpt you posted. It's pretty cool. Rivlis, it's cool. I, I admire the traditional sculptors a ton. So it's it's really cool stuff. that later. And her forehead is big. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll I'll take the polish brush and I'll come in here and just hit the side of the head just to make that plain. Like that. Flipping out. All right. Oh, bondo copy. So that bondo copy of the skull is kind of like what I'm doing right now. It's like this under underlying starting spot, you know. Okay, I'm gonna save this. used to wear corsets so tight that they would pass out. Yep, <laughs> it's so true. What's more extreme, wearing something that makes you pass out or removing ribs? I know. Who knows? Or just drawing it in a cartoon and never try to achieve that in real life. <laughs> That's what you do. Right, ladies, don't try this at home. <laughs> it's just a cartoon. see, I 
used to do traditional sculpting. Miniature stuff. Oh, Games Workshop, really? Awesome. Want to get away from it, do bigger things and thought. Yep. Yep. Control Z for the win. Okay, let's uh I'll typically smooth this this shelf in between the two. And here's a kind of a trick you can do when you're when you're um wanting to like meld two objects together you can here let me sorry I'm just getting distracted I'm gonna mask this off Boop. then invert it so I'm not grabbing that arm okay I just want a better transition. So, the trick on doing transitions um, between two objects, like say these, this rib cage and the, the belly, what you can do is grab this either polish or trim dynamic, and you can polish right across the top like this. And if I turn the color off, see how it kind of just disappears? Just goes away. You can polish it down to just gone. But it'll still be there in the color. See that? But not that I want to do that right now, but that's kind of how you do it. And I'll use that method a lot when I'm doing hair, and the hair is going into, you know, at the, at the head, like up near the part line, it will break on the part line. And then as it goes across the crest, like the peak right here, it will typically kind of meld together as it goes down and then it'll break apart again. So during that melding transition, I'll typically do something like that and polish them together. Yeah, Reviz, everybody needs to learn how to sculpt Jessica Rabbit in a 32 million. <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't even know where to start, honestly. Okay, this is crazy. I gotta fix that right now. Crazy. She's hippie, but not, not like that. Okay. I kind of want to move everything back in space just for fun. What I'm doing is just masking this, blurring it on both sides. Then I'm going to just kind of push it back in space a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. I know she's got crazy bizarre proportions right now. Let's see. It's like I keep putting my pen away like I'm dipping it in paint. <laughs> You're watching Godzilla presentation from MPC, crazy model. Um, I've never, I, I don't, I haven't seen it, so I, I'd have to check it out. Um, closest thing I did was a dragon once. And that was, cr that was probably, I would say that's probably the most challenging model I've ever done. Alright, this music has to go. Progressive house. It's all boots and cats and boots and cats. <laughs> okay. That's what my kids say. This music sounds like boots and cats.
Um, also, ZZ Crap, you should look into the new. Um, oh, now I'm trying to. I can't. I forget what it's called. They're they're 3D brushes. You guys help remind me what they're called. Where you can make a like a dragon scale, and then you can just draw it on the surface, and it's all three dimensional. You can do it over and over and over again. It's new with with 4R8. I haven't used it much yet. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Not IMM. It's uh. Gosh, it's a certain type of brush. Yes, VDM, thank you. Yeah, VDM. So, yeah, VDM brushes you can make, and you can make like dragon scales or whatever. So with Godzilla, you would do, uh, you know, just make a, a whole handful of like dragon scales and just draw them on and whatever. I really want to try it actually. That would be great. Let's see. What music inspires me the most artistically when working? That's a great question because I actually have a Spotify playlist that I can't play because it's all copyrighted music. But I, you might be able to look me up on Spotify. But it's typically like movie soundtracks. Um, just like epic epic movie soundtracks, like Danny Elfman stuff, and um, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And I also like BT, like, I'm trying to remember his name, Brian Tian. BT, and this, BT is kind of like this, but it's not so house, you know, drum and bassy, I guess, or repeaty. It's a more ambient. And, uh, gosh. Cascade, Tiesto, BT. I think it's kind of dance ish music. And then, if I'm like in a weird mood, I'd, yeah, Hans Zimmer. Um, if I'm in a, a nostalgic mood or whatever, I'll listen to like old 80s New Wave. That was like The Cure and Depeche Mode and. Erasure and stuff like that. I don't know. Howard Jones. The butt. Let's build the butt. funny the with my students the it seems like the rear is one of the most difficult areas to get correctly so you want to have this triangle too much without getting getting rated R. <laughs> but the they're the kind of shape the butt cheeks are kind of shaped like a like a butterfly. So there's an indentation right here. And then they come out like this. But you don't want to go too crazy on a stylized character. And you want to watch this flow going from the ribs down the back and then across and down to the legs and you just want a little a little change of direction right here um, I see a lot of my students typically are like this you know some crazy bubbly thing and it's not that <laughs> Then you can also drag this end, not too far, but 
When I get into the DynaMesh and I'm smoothing stuff out, I'll smooth this out right here. Let's see. Oh, d damn it. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. So how the dragon did not go... How did, so that how the dragon... Oh, is Steve... Debbie Gibson! <laughs> Come on, Steve. Gosh, I'm not paying attention to chat, and I'm just getting... <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. The testosterone. <laughs> Tanuki, welcome, man. Good to see you. 1930 swing music. There is actually some updated swing music that is is pretty dang cool. There's a postmodern jukebox stuff that I'm I've been enjoying lately. That's pretty good. I really like Daft Punk. They're one of my faves. Ha, da, 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 da. Wait, you were carrying it in your hands and tripped on the stairs and broke the wings? No. Oh man. I wanna see these things. <laughs> Hello from Russia. What's up, smoking? Smoking pics? How's it going? Yep, the booty. <laughs> Less is more. Action, welcome to the stream. L.A. <laughs> Chris, does that mean you're going to the Zebra Summit? I'd love to meet some of you guys. Spake. <laughs> Space Orcs. Uh, Dammit89, um, I do, I mostly do everything. So I will do the, I'll do the high res and the low res and the texture maps, all of, all of that, yeah. Okay, I'm not liking this very much. Sorry, I keep seeing things and I'm like, I gotta fix that. Um, some for uh, Disney Infinity, we did outsource a few. The low res during the end when it just got too much to handle, and I was actually pretty pretty happy with that because <laughs> it's not always the funnest, you know. Okay, let's put in the. Oh, CTN as well. I'll be there as well. Sweet. Yeah, I should come say hi. If you see me wandering around, looking lost. Okay. This trick I learned from Steve James. Hey Steve James. He's he's the first person I saw block in the traps and the lats and the, all that stuff. And he's here. That's right. What's up Steve? <laughs> Glad you could make it. What do you think of these tunes, Steve? <laughs> we were just talking about music before the stream. Like, listening to music we don't typically listen to, listen to because it's copyright. Or non-copyrighted.
So do any of you traditional miniature sculptors, are you are you doing the digital thing? Or is that, or are you just trying to get into it? I'm just wondering if it's going to that or if you're still, if it's all about tr the traditional stuff still. first start, was there anything you struggled in? You're okay with hard surface, but organic still troubles me? Um, so, uh, what did I struggle with? So I've been, I've been character modeling for most of my career. I've been doing it for 18 years, and I've only been doing ZBrush for the last six or seven years and the last three or four years like seriously solidly um, so let's see what did I struggle with I I guess the main thing and I'm I still struggle with it is anatomy you know just getting just getting proper anatomy because what I'm doing here is not proper anatomy I'm just I'm just trying to make it look somewhat appealing. I'm going for appeal more than like realism. Because I'm, I'm gonna blend all this down. I'm just trying to get some just like just the shapes through here. So yeah it would be, it would be anatomy and I, I really would like to uh, take some real-life anatomy classes like in LA and stuff. So I'm going to run, so Blance had a question, when you use Z-Remesher, do you have adaptive size active? I don't, typically. This is, well, it's just, it's just default, so I guess it's adaptive size, size 50, but that's just default, whatever it was. Um, I'm going to crank it up to 4, though, and see what it gives me. Turn wireframe on so I can see what it looks like. Solo. So it had some troubles because this was so broken. So I'm going to smooth that out and hit it again. Honestly, I don't even know what adaptive skin size does. I haven't messed with it too much. Because I always just do default, so. There we go. It's better. And then it lost my, lost my crevice. <laughs> so. I don't, I, I, I won't need that, so I don't really care too much. And sometimes Z Remesher will uh, put a peak down the center of everything on the mirror line, so I'll have to go back in there and finish that out. Let me, um, I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to open up the block out of the pirate just so you guys can see it if you it's kind of a blast from the past see this song's not too bad so block in one let's take a look okay okay that's what I did see I really liked how this back turned out and I knew what I'm what I was doing just now was not what I had done previously. So I want to take this up over and meet the collarbone here, not tuck it up underneath this shoulder. It's like, what is going on? So this was the pirate girl. This is, we finished her. Did you guys all see the pirate girl last week? The finished pirate girl? Do you guys want to see it? She's not finished finished, but I'll show you. There you go. So this is how she turned out. Um, I still need to pose the squid and I still need to put the daggers right here and then render her out in key shot. 
And then I'm, I need to put some of the liquid in this in this jar thing. But it should turn out pretty good, I think. I'm satisfied. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, so pretty stoked on that. Um, so this, she started from this. This was the block out for her. And do I save these block outs as future base messages? I usually start from scratch each piece. Um, the one thing I might do occasionally is I will bring in hands because hands are kind of a pain and they're not that much different each time. So, uh, but for learning purposes, I'll block them out, you know. But uh, I just wanted to look at this back and see what I did so I can kind of do it again. But, yep. Because this, this one turned out, this is probably one of the best backs that I've blocked out. I liked it a lot. So let's, let's do it with this one. Let's fix this. You know what I'm gonna do? The thing you can do is hold is is park it right here, turn off perspective, and push Shift S, and that will copy it to the background. So now I can use it as a reference. But this one's a lot. The proportions are a lot different, or they're gonna be a lot different. Just her waist is much smaller. Her legs are gonna be a lot longer. And then her bodice, her rib cage is going to be a lot thicker and from front to back and left to right. And her shoulders will be bigger. And her arms will probably be thinner. So, there you go. That's why I start from scratch, because I don't want to be influenced by previous blockouts. It's funny because you can tell when someone has been influenced by a, a block out or a base model that somebody has used before. Typically, unless they're really aware of it, you know, if they're really like trying to avoid it a lot. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna pull this through. Thanks, easy crap. <laughs> textured in ZBrush. Yes, I textured that. The whole entire thing is done in ZBrush. I did not export her out and do anything anywhere else. It's all ZBrush. So um, she is nearly ready to 3D print. I'm gonna I'm gonna be sending her over to a 3D printer, hopefully soon. So let's see the space room. You guys still talking about miniatures? <laughs> you two. You two get a room. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. I like to hear about that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm very, very interested in that market, actually. Okay. I like this, see this change of direction I had? I forgot I did that. That's, uh, I like doing that a lot. Just so it's not so flat. And you can also f use the pinch brush on a block out. You don't have to just strictly stick with move. But I don't, I don't want her looking like a soldier. So basically what I'll do is I'll pull that up and then smooth it back down and then it'll give me that nice change of direction that I'm looking for. <laughs> Reeve Liz and Sumerian King, that's totally fine. Do it. You're doing Apocalypse from the X-Men? Oh man. Is that the body from your other model? See, it's it's in <laughs> it's in traditional too. See, oh, I'm I'm right. 
I'm, I, I guess it's a little uh, it's a little different when it's traditional sculpting because you save so much time, right? Because I know a lot of traditional modelers. Well, you tell me if I'm lying or not. But traditional sculptors will make make molds of their parts and then reuse them occasionally just to save time because you know everybody has a deadline, right? Time is money. You're, <laughs> you're lying. <laughs> Sorry. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, right? Only the filler. So, like, um, so are you talking about, um, like, for the armature parts? You'll mold those out. It's really interesting to me that stuff. This up. This is the one that goes up underneath the armpit. So this is a combination of lots of different muscles, like the lats. So the traps are several different ones, and the lats are several different ones. But I'm just looking for the just the large shapes. And you won't see this in the end, but I don't. It's it's kind of uh, therapeutic and fun to, to do that do it this way and just to block it out there's this um, I think I'm gonna have to Z remesh this soon so I'm stretching the heck out of this one I'm gonna hide these arms so when you hide objects your dynamic subdivisions go get turned off so you can actually see the real resolution you're working in. See how these are starting to get all stretched out like crazy. Uh, man, ZZ Crap's got all the questions tonight. Keep them coming, man. So how often do I use photogrammetry? The answer to that is never. But my friends use it for um, just because I I typically do stylized characters. I don't do realistic characters. Excuse me. And uh, but my friends will use it for when they're building out um, levels for games. It's just kind of the new thing, and I'm glad it's a new thing because it's making the levels look amazing, like that uh, Star Wars Battlefront. Holy cow! That game looks incredible. And I guess all the new ones like um, Horizon Zero Dawn, so good. Let's see. Um, for anatomy, use muscle and motion? I don't think I've ever heard of that. Hmm, I'll have to check that out. Interesting. For uh, for your reference, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna crank this up to like a five. Let's see what it gives me. So sometimes it'll give me that. Don't care. Yes, Horizon Zero Dawn was amazing. So, especially her hair, so good. And the the facial expressions. You could, I think that's the first game that I've actually been able to read the characters' facial expressions in. You know, like just their reactions to conversation that's happening. So good. Um, 
muscles in different positions. Many are animated. That's a really cool reference. Thanks for sharing that. Super cool. <laughs> what kind of question is that, Revliz? Anyone ever build a 1700 scale of a battleship and rigged it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, is easy crap? I use. Uh, yeah, I prefer Keyshot. I played Injustice 1, but not 2. Is that one pretty good? Okay. I like to put these little, these two little tubes down there. Let's see the... Let's see... Back tubes, but her... Yeah, you might see him. I'll put it in. Why not? Why not? I'm gonna hide these arms again so I can see what I'm doing. Yes, this is a version of Jessica Rabbit. This is, uh, hang on a second, I gotta, I gotta get his name right. It is Brian Kessinger, and he works at uh, Disney Feature. He's a concept artist, I believe. He gave me permission to model this. He's pretty, pretty stoked about it. I'm pretty stoked about it. I've wanted to model a Jessica Rabbit for a long time. And as you can see, I have a... I have a Jessica Rabbit back there. <laughs> it's like two and a half feet tall. I got from Disneyland. My buddy Jason Newkirk picked that up for me a long time ago. When he was there. Jason sometimes stops by the stream. Oh, Zephyrus Prime, yes, you're welcome. Welcome, you're welcome. It does have some of the new 4R8 stuff in it. And I have these little, and I added green to my colors, <laughs> to my interface colors. So that's kind of how you know that you're using the updated UI. And I put, uh, so I put these morph, morph targets up here because it works in conjunction with the chisel brush, which I added down here. That's new to 4R8. And then I also added this uh, dynamic and apply down here, so you can see it. Um, and I have the Gizmo 3D right here. And I left the live boolean right here. So those are new. Um, and then some I added some stuff on, onto the menu. So, yeah, I'm glad you're digging it. Okay. Now this is... This is pretty crazy. Her torso is super tall and long. I think I'm going to shorten this whole thing up. I'm going to show you right now why I like to keep things separate. So I'm going to try something. See, uh, this this is the, the torso length I'm used to. And the ribs coming down into it. And this torso is crazy long, and hers is just not that long. So we are going to hit home and pull this whole thing down. Okay, so it's not so crazy tall. Then invert the mask and rework this bit back in. See how easy that was? Looks all weird and bizarre, but we'll fix it. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Have you ever broke ZBrush of complexity of an asset? Okay. 
So I'm trying to understand the question. So have I ever broke ZBrush because of how complex an asset is? Like, um, the answer is yes. I haven't really. I've I've brought it to its knees before, and that's with that dragon I was working on that I was talking to you about earlier. Um, the dragon was it was I think it was ZBrush three or two. Anyway, it was it was a while ago, and. Uh, it was it was quite quite dense. I had to break it into two parts. Actually, it was so dense. But I, it didn't really crash on me. It just was super slow and unworkable. Okay. <laughs> you can break ZBrush by looking at it. Sometimes that's true. There's, you know, there's some, sometimes you just accidentally mess up a mesh and you don't know how or why. And uh, you just, yeah, you just gotta figure it out. Figure out why it broke. Hey, Conchu, welcome to the stream, thanks. not play that one. One second, the foot is where you left it, and it magically becomes your head. <laughs> Honestly, I've, I've not experienced that one, thankfully. <laughs> and I, like I said, I am gonna steal these hands. I'm gonna rip them off. Because I don't really feel like blocking those out again. How I'm gonna do that is just append this. She's a lot smaller. I'm going to shrink this one down. Proportions are different. For sure. I got her belly way out. It's kind of interesting to compare proportions of different models. Okay. So now for this guy... everything that's not the hands, merge them down. Come on. Changes all the colors. Those are cool colors. find the least enjoyable part of the initial blocking out of the character. So much so I find myself putting off starting new projects sometimes. Um, not necessarily because doing it, do you do it this way? Like, do you block it out with primitive shapes or how do you do it? Um, when I'm blocking out with primitive shapes I, I kind of enjoy the process. So. But 
but I know what you're, what you're saying. I think I'm going to leave them kind of bent like this. Kind of like that change of direction. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, don't start with a Z-Sphere and Dynamesh. Don't do that. <laughs> that's that's my advice. I'm I'm not a fan of doing it that way at all. I I used to, and I I'm I'm with you. I don't like it. Crap my system config like my machine. The hand is the size of the head from the middle finger to the right behind the wrist. Oh right. That's a good call. And her she's got really long, crazy fingers too. So, I need to learn more tricks like that, more measurement tricks. So, my machine, this is a new machine I just bought for streaming in particular. Um, it's, uh, it's an RM, or AMD 1800, 1700, something like that. Um, with a whole ton of RAM. And it has two uh, two graphics cards in it. Just wanted to not struggle. All right, Waltron, you can help. Let's see. So you're saying from like hands the size of the head from the middle finger to right behind the wrist. So like right here. Right there. That's an interesting measurement. So like about like that. It's, it's assuming this head is the right size. Right? From the chin to the top of the head. Right. So I'm thinking just past the wrist. I, I guess they could be a little bit bigger, but like I said, I don't know. I, I'll probably shrink that chin way up into her head. So those hands might be Goliath. They're pretty wide. I'm gonna shrink them down just a little bit. Okay. And then mid thigh. Right. Yeah, they're going to be long and thin. Long and thin fingers. I usually work those fingers all the way till the very end. Cool looking android. Yep. <laughs> Take us to your leader. I'm going to bring this in just a bit. really long, but we'll get there. Alright, I'm done with that. <laughs> yeah, they, they do read a little better. Especially when you, I'm like I want to print this out too, so I typically make them make them bigger than they, even than they should be, you know. So I'll probably make them bigger eventually. We'll see. Yeah. Just a little bit. Mm. 
Okay. Let's, uh... Mm -mm -mm. Oh. We need ears. We need the jaw to come up more. I'm going to shrink this down. It'll all come into place when we get it dynameshed. I can't tell how long her neck is supposed to be, but I think I'm going to make it smaller than this. Uh, yeah, I, sw I, I cheated. I totally swiped them from the, the block out. If you want to see how I block those hands out, you can watch the my other stream on my older stream on YouTube from the, the Pirate Girl. Gosh, this is looking crazy. up to in the front just so they integrate more with that chest okay let's put yeah that's why I went like hands <laughs> abracadabra make me some hands okay let's see You guys know Jessica Rabbit, she's not small in this region. cylinder. Yeah. <laughs> Start with say two cylinders for the arms and then combine them together once you get the basic shape. So, oh you're talking to Ziphus Prime? Where is Ziphus Prime? Oh, using simple shapes and spheres like cylinders. Are you guys talking about real or digital now? clay guys in here talking digital so I have this um, I have this appendage brush so it's, it's in my insert multi mesh brush see this right here appendage all it is is an elongated sphere and basically that's how I made the arms let me show the wireframes if you want to see them but that's what this is so it's tapered on one end and I'll just I'll just click somewhere like if I'm making this arm let's say I'll just click down here and drag it out and then I'll push it back in and it'll make it skinny and see I almost have the shape that I want right there 
then I can just grab it and you know put it where I want it. And I I give these brushes away for free on my site. So if you go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com, like this above me, um, you can go sign up for my newsletter and you'll get my brushes and my user interface. And it comes with that insert multi mesh brush, and you can try it. Try the weird. Because doesn't that seem more? You tell me, because I'm not that big of a traditional clay guy, but. Is that more like what you do? I know you do the dab and you grab the, you know, you grab pieces and stick them on your armature, but um, I think of this more like rolling up balls of clay and sticking it together. And then later on, you turn it to a dynamesh, which is kind of similar to taking your thumb and going across the, the seams, you know, and merging everything together. So that's kind of the idea behind doing it this way. In my mind, anyway. I learned this from Michael DeFeo, who is a digital sculptor, tradi or traditional sculptor turned digital, and he he blocks stuff out this way, and that's kind of where I first first saw it being done. Oh, <laughs> you've seen the light turn to ZBrush. It's probably a good thing. Control Z. Like you said. Okay, this transition right here has got me bugged. It's going too far in. So I'm going to pull it out. Smooth it down. Okay, I did lose my my pipes, but that's okay. Whatever you want to call those two muscles. These two things. Okay. I honestly don't know why I put those in, but why not? Because they just get smoothed down and they go away pretty easily. It's kind of a road map, I guess, that I give myself. <laughs> Sorry. What? Any tip for an interview who do not have any experienced student? Okay. So any tips for when you're interviewing, when you're trying to get a job to interview? Um, just, oh gosh, that's a tough question. It's, I haven't, I haven't interviewed for so long. Um, let's see. <laughs> well, well, it's, it's uh it's it's thinking trapezius is a swear word. That's pretty funny. The muscles the trapezius. Yes. Oh, you're talking about the you're talking about the back pipe? <laughs> oh. Thank you. I don't know what they are. Oh. So let's see, interview, just be honest, just be yourself, um, know your stuff, and yeah, that's, I, I have more advice for people in the industry, you never want to burn bridges and make people mad, because the industry is very small. Yeah, you're such a potty mouth. Walton, <laughs> you're like bringing trapezius. <laughs> I think I'm gonna start using anatomy words for swear words, because that way I'll learn them. <laughs> right? Okay, 
This is this is driving me crazy. It's way everything up here is way high. Let's bring this down. goodness old lady I gotta do it one one thing at a time here yeah I'm I, honestly I I uh, I can't memorize stuff very well at all so if I see it I can remember but if I can't remember words and names of things and names of people typically so I'll say, hey, hey you, show me your work. Oh, yeah, you're that guy, or you're that girl. Or I've seen you before, but I can't remember your name. I'm horrible at that. And it's the same with anatomy. It's like, I'll just... <laughs> same with, like, the Overwatch characters. I can't remember what... <laughs> what the, the names of them are. So I just call them, like, Hog Hog. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, that was terrible with names. Terrible. Okay, let's see. Something's bugging me about. Can't quite put my. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> All sorts of bad jokes happening. Yeah, Roadhog, Hog Hog, <laughs> Arrow Guy. <laughs> I, I remember Junkrat because that's who I play as. I play as Junkrat, typically. Mercy. And the girl with the, the girl with the little turrets everywhere that has a microwave gun. We just call her Easy Mode. So all she does is run around and she doesn't even have to aim. Just hooks onto you and jumps around and kills you. <laughs> Easy mode. I don't even know her name. Is it Symmetra or something? Okay. Whoa. Mercy main. <laughs> yep. I'm just thankful enough that I have enough enough friends that like to play the healer part. Okay. She has really wide shoulders. I mean she does, but not maybe not that wide. So let's make another adjustment. Push these guys in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you woke right up when I said Overwatch. <laughs> like, what, what? Overwatch. Torbjorn. <laughs> uh, I have some friends working on that game, and, and they are they are doing some fantastic work. Okay, now I'm going to try something. I'm going to try making her legs longer. I want to exaggerate that. <laughs> Let's see. Da, 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 da. This our school for computer animating has been using Maya and ZBrush. Any tips on how to not get so discouraged of others? Are you talking about others, other, other people or other programs? I've never used any of the other programs before or had a background with art and everyone in class seems like an expert comparing my work to a friend's is like Sloppy Joe, <laughs> Gordon Ramsay Burger. Uh, it, it just comes down to, yeah, it just comes down to uh, practice and, you know, learning the techniques and getting better and um, ZBrush. If, 
You know, I've I've found because I I teach ZBrush a lot. I have a course and I teach ZBrush, and I have found that it's a lot harder for people coming from the box modeling world, like the traditional modeling world, not traditional clay, but traditional like digital modeling in Maya, trying to learn ZBrush, they have a much harder time learning it than somebody fresh uh, that has never dealt with 3D before because a lot of people coming from Maya or 3D Studio Max they expect ZBrush to behave a certain way and it just doesn't, it's its own beast. So um, yeah, you might you might have an easier time learning it if you're coming from not knowing any 3D at all. But um, like I said, I've been teaching this course and I teach this block out method and there are brand new students in there that have never really used ZBrush before and they're, they're doing some really crazy cool stuff with it right away. Um, because ZBrush is intimidating, it really is. Um, and you just gotta know where, where the stuff is and just know how to get around. And the things you want to pay attention to the most are how to hide and show things, how to group things by polygroups. That's what these colors are. And that's what, uh, yeah, somebody somebody asked um, what, these colors are polygroups. It's essentially polygroups with, with the wireframes turned off. So if you if you hit this line, if you hit polyframe, it'll turn the, the colors on. And if you hit line, it'll turn the, the wires off. You can also hit fill, and it'll turn the colors off and leave the wire on. So I like working this way. Because then I can see, um, then I can see what I'm doing more. Like I can see where the, where the parts are all fitting together. And uh, let's see, I, I lost my train of thought, sorry. <laughs> Took a few classes under some people from Avalanche and a friend that got in just before it, it shut down. Oh yeah, so that's where I used to work is Avalanche. I worked there for ten years. Um, so I probably know exactly who you're talking about. I remember when I was in school, some of the students have struggled in the beginning really. Uh, yeah, it's it it depends on the person too. Like if they've had. If they've had traditional drawing skills and painting skills in the past, or even sculpting skills, like traditional sculpting skills, they'll get in school and they'll just, you know, they just have kind of that tendency to, to hit it hard and figure it out. But yeah, just just get good. <laughs> so, yeah, Coop, welcome to the stream. Still use that initialize ZBrush button because you don't know what you did and how to fix it. Um, yeah, I typically don't use initialize. I will I will start ZBrush fresh, and then I will use my, I, I have this project that I made called 3D Start, and this is from my, this is from my course. And basically what that will do is that will reset everything. It will, it'll clear out the tools over here. It will make the, the canvas stretch all the way to the outer edges. It will set up some of my settings and it kind of refreshes. And then I'll, I'll load a tool into that project. I only save tools. I never save projects because projects can get really, really big. So I just, uh, I try to avoid saving projects. So let's see. Um, awesome program machines tools really help. Oh, thank you very much. You sat, you sat down, mouse in hand, and went at it two hours later. <laughs> well, because because you're trying to sculpt with a mouse, but yeah, there's ZBrush is not. It, you can't just kind of sit down and learn it. You have to actually be handheld through it a little bit. Uh, when I was first learning ZBrush, there was nothing out there really, nothing to learn from. It's just, and and we had to learn it because we were going to be doing toys and 3D printing and that kind of stuff. And, you know, we couldn't really do it in Maya, so we had to learn it, kind of just feet first, falling into the fire. But, uh, let's see, practice every day. Yeah, 100 models. You know, and I, I actually, uh, I recommend blocking out models like this, even if you're not going to take it to final. You can, you can get so far just figuring out the design, the character design, and the silhouette, and the forms, and the flows, and all that kind of stuff and just in a block out. 
and it's it's a great exercise to f just go find a character that you're interested in and just block it out you know just I mean this this block out hasn't it's taken me two hours with chatting and you know I kind of know what I'm doing <laughs> not really but you block out shouldn't take very long is the point you should be able to block something out really quickly so I, I recommend practicing practicing blocking characters out over and over and over again rather than see ZBrush is like you'll see most people make monsters and they'll make realistic faces and things like that because detail is known or ZBrush is known for its high levels of detail so you're expecting to just jump into ZBrush and hit the high detail right away and that's the wrong way to approach it that's kind of backwards because you can't the, there's no amount of detail that will fix a bad block out or a bad base so you want to get your base fantastic first then the detail will come later so uh, blocking characters out like this kind of forces you to be simple it forces you to pay attention to the simple shapes and not get you know not not get into the details right away so that's my recommendations let's see da -da -da. sorry I'm missing there's all you guys asking questions <laughs> uh, definitely believe that's true yeah don't try not to get too intimidated just like I said just try blocking some characters out and be happy with your block outs before you take it to, to final Yeah, Zephyrus Prime, if you're trying to learn both at the same time, your brain is going to explode. Because <laughs> they're two completely different different programs. Just seeing others work and really discouraging. Yeah, it's, I mean, you see, you see people like taking it to the ultimate level, and that's pretty much what you see on ArtStation. And you really don't see the struggle that people go through to get there. Uh, a good a good thing to do is to go to if you go to art station kind of go to just the most recent there's a tab called recent and you can see people's work that don't they typically don't make it to trending and you can kind of see where people are at and then you won't feel so alone when you're first starting out there's a lot of people in the on the same level as you are and then you can just get better i i like to use the trending thing to kind of uh kind of get a gauge on if people like my work or not and to kind of see if it shows up in trending and then to see how long it sticks around before it goes away and you can't you can only take trending with a grain of salt because uh, it's kind of biased what people like is kind of biased they like you know realistic stuff or or girls typically you know sexy girls but sometimes you know if you, a good cartoon character will pop up in there and stay for a while it's kind of fun to see so um, so you don't want to spam. Yeah, I can't. Red Hot Wheels. I can't. Uh, I can't really take too long to critique people's work when I'm streaming. So um, that's. I mean, that's a decent base. It's kind of kind of a fun start. But I I just don't have the time, you know. So I, I apologize for that, because it's not fair to everybody else if I'm off critiquing somebody else's work. <laughs> so. Um, but advice, like I said, just, just block characters out. I mean, it's just the head there and a, a few details. And uh, I was I was the the character, the character department head at Disney Interactive. So I had to look at a lot of portfolios. Well, all of us would. We would go over these portfolios. And we would look for, you know, all of the character design things, like silhouette and form and design and all of that stuff if it's you know you got to have you got to have that in there and don't just take it to a render you need to take it to full game character if you want to get a job in the industry in a game industry you have to have a you know game character show to show off your work okay i'm going to start i'm going to put in the ear here i'm answering whoops not this Just so I can fix that skull. The skull shape's a little weird. So let's see. What smooth D resolution setting do you use before? Um, I just I typically leave it at default, which is three. So that's a good question though. Um,
um, which is two actually, but once in a while I'll crank it to three if I'm getting too low in resolution. But I don't really need the resolution too much, as you can tell. I, I just kind of look at it as it is. But typically, just leave it at defaults. Nothing crazy. Okay. All the questions tonight, I love it. So who are your favorite pinup artists? I remember you did a Shane Glein sculpt. Yes, I did. So you'd guess the guys who did the Batman animated series would be some? Yeah, so like, uh, yeah, like Shane Glein's and Bruce Timm and, uh, but some of the older ones like Gil, Gil Elgren, Elgren, I think his name is. Um, gosh, no. Like I just said, I, I suck with names, but basically the, the Playboy pinup artists. I love Dean Eagle's stuff. I'm a huge fan of Dean Eagle. Um, he does a, a pinup, her name is Mandy, typically draws her, and I've been wanting to model her, but so many people have sculpted her that it's kind of like, you know, a wait in line kind of a thing, but <laughs> I've, I've sculpted a lot of Dean's other designs, because he, he was an animator and he does really great volumes in his drawings, because typically animators will put volume into their drawings so it makes it easier to model, and uh, He's, he's always at CTN, so I'll see him every year. Let's see. Just trying to get that in the right place. So if any of you guys go to CTN, I, I usually, I typically go, go to CTN every year. I love meeting everyone. It's like friend, friendship reunion. So the, the head changes so much as I work through it. Usually the block out looks like a block out, kind of crappy. So I'm going to try something really quick and just run a pinch line down this jaw line. Yeah. Sorry, Red Hot Wheels. No worries. Zebra brush is your main jam. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Something that helps me is to turn the model upside down. For sure. For sure. Another thing you can do, Build Buddy, is, is what does it look like in the thumbnail? Like, make it really small. You know? And usually, usually you'll figure out problems right away when it's small. Well, big problems, you'll see. They'll stick out. So... But yeah, turn it upside down, check it out. What does it look like? This looks like, to me, it looks like these three shapes are exactly the same. So, I'll have to work on that. So, see how her, her legs is really smooth and it smooths into itself? I'll work that out as I go. And not have such a big, uh, such a big, change in direction at the knee. Probably smooth this right out. And have this kind of thicker as it goes down. Down into that teeny ankle. And then the shoe itself is going to change the shape of this pointed part down here. So that's just kind of a block out. So, alright. Thanks for dropping by, Tyr. Let's see. Blah, blah. I want to be a character creature artist, so I figure if I learn at least how real people and creatures are proportioned, it will help with creating the stuff you really want to make. Yes, absolutely. Ally Info, by the way, it's very much appreciated. Yep, no, no worries. Thanks for asking the questions. Because didn't make such cool things to light, my job would be su super boring. <laughs> yeah. The, dude, the lighters make our stuff look good. <laughs> so, so yeah, right, right back at you. Thank you very much. 
That's a... Dude, lighting is a tough job. Tough job. Nothing but respect. So are you in film or uh, are you in games for lighting? And yes, this is a this is a standing desk. It's it's up right now. Let's see. Um co-op twelve, is there a reason you go with a relaxed T pose compared to a normal T pose? Yes. So what you typically want to do for rigging is you want to park your appendages in the in the center position of any uh, range of motion. So since an arm's range of motion is typically from all the way up here to all the way down here, typically your T-pose is straight out because that's the middle of the range of motion. But if it's a character that does not typically put their arm above their head and they're usually having their arms down to their side and walking around and not doing like hanging on cliffs and gymnastics and stuff um, it is better for the deformation to have their arm at a what's called an a pose it's like a capital a than than a t pose typically so uh, it's just down to the studio whatever the rigging department wants in that specific studio but uh that's and it usually creates more of a natural shoulder area when you have them at, a, at an A pose rather than a T pose. So, film full live action. Wow, yeah, that's that's tough. Where did you learn how to do that? I'm just curious. That's really cool. I'm just going to work on this transition a little more, this knee. Then what the, another thing that helps the lower leg is the shin. And I usually pin, use the pinch brush on the reverse and kind of peek it out right there. Another thing I can do is switch to a different shader. Honestly, I don't think I have my shaders loaded up yet. I don't. Let me look at these. Mm. I need to load my shaders up. Zebro has some fantastic shaders. I usually use uh, Zebro Gray, and that will show off the, the surface very very nicely and as there's zebra clay and zebra modeling I believe and you can find those online just look up zebra zbrush They're really nice materials what did I do to this okay I kinda messed my knee up let's do this again Yeah, co-op, no problem. Let's see, that's cool season. Oh, let's see, what are you? I'm missing so much stuff. <laughs> let's see. I'm trying to become a VFX artist or something along that line. Oh, it's hard. Right now I'm in games. I want to try to work in films in the future. You know, a lot of people have that. They want to do that. You know, get go from film go into film from games but just be warned that a lot of film studios they don't count your game well typically they don't count your game experience as film experience so they they will be you'll be starting over if you get in the games get in a film studio if you've been working in games from my my and my friends experience anyway I've, I've had friends of mine transition from working with me in games and they end up in film like at Pixar and Sony and stuff like that and that's what they've said but I've never worked in film myself so 
That's just what I've heard. So with film, as I understand it, the when a film is done, you're looking for another job because of the the Actors Guild and stuff like that. Or I'm not I'm not sure. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. If you're in film, but so it's just it's really cool to work on films, but unless you're living in LA or something where it's easier to transition to different studios as you're going. Um, it just depends on how much you want to move around and stuff like that. So just kind of flattening out the bottom of these. Australia. Wow. Australia. So is it in the middle of the day in Australia right now? Okay. I'm gonna try I'm gonna try and push this just a little more. It's gonna be ridiculous, but I gotta try. So here's a secret, not really a secret, but I want to get that gizmo in the center of the head. So if I hold down Alt and I click this, this Google Map icon thing, it's only going to center the gizmo in half of the head because I have symmetry turned on. If I turn that off and hit, I hit that same Google Maps gizmo thing, then it will center the gizmo in the center of the head. And then I turn symmetry back on and now I can scale the head. Too much. Maybe like that. And she has kind of a tall head. I'm just gonna make it a little taller and slightly narrower. Okay. film you work for a studio that looks for movie clients to work on? Yeah, that sounds... Yeah, Argentina. Wow. What's the brush I'm using? Um, I typically move the use the move brush when I'm working these uh, shapes around. Um, sometimes I'll use pinch. How much do I stand versus sit at work? Um, I it's about I stand about 40% of the time, 30, 40% of the time, and then sit the rest of the time. About as long as I can stand it. <laughs> uh, okay, if I were starting out in Stride, I'd aim for game studios, then get into animation or live action web series. Yeah, Weta in New Zealand. That's good. That's a good goal. Yeah, they do have full-time staff, but you know, it depends on. It 
depends on how long you've been there. Like, uh, yeah, and in, in, uh, when I was at Disney Interactive, um, I was there for 10 years at the studio, so, but that was the, that was the seventh studio I've been at, sixth, seventh. But that's just in Utah, just moving around inside Utah, because Utah is interesting because basically someone will start up a studio and then it will start to grow and get big enough and enough clients that a larger studio from outside of the state will come and purchase it, like Electronic Arts or Sony or someone like that. And then when times get tough, when they uh, you know, they start to lose their funding or, or things start to go south, they look at the books and they're like, well, we could cut this studio. That's like the first thing they look at. And so that has pretty much happened to every studio in Salt Lake, including Disney Interactive and Sony and just EA not too long ago, where it's just like, you know, they get bought and then they make some products and then they kill them. Acclaim did that. There's been so many studios. Access Software. Actually, Access was here for a while. They made golf games back in the day for a while. I like to point this, the, the shoulders kind of down, down the arm. What brush did I use to flatten the other side of the foot? Um, that was just a combination of pinch and smooth. So if I turn dynamic off, you can see that it's it's really low resolution. See that? And I just I just pinched it along there. Let me turn the wireframes on. And this the geometry is not the best. So basically all I did was let me turn dynamic back on. Turn the wireframe back off. So I just use pinch with alt and I just kind of pinched it along here to bring it together. And then I just came back under here and hit smooth and just smooth this out. That's all. Yeah. Not really not really magic. <laughs> Sometimes I just do stuff I'm not even thinking about it. Like, I don't know. Just did the thing. Okay, I'm gonna block out this uh, this shoe. I think uh, this is a pretty interesting, pretty interesting design of that shoe because it, it's like it it folds in on itself right here. This piece is coming sticking down into the toe piece, and the toe piece is kind of wrapping around itself. So I'm just going to insert another sphere. So just so you guys know, when I do this, um, I when I go to Dynamesh the body together, all I'll do is I'll Dynamesh the things that I want to meld together. So if I'm going to start blocking out the shoe, I will separate that shoe off as its own subtool before I Dynamesh the body together. That's another thing some of my students um, didn't I didn't explain it well enough? I think and they dynamished everything together. Let's see. You you need the eight hundred dollars ZBrush to get custom brushes. Yes, you for ZBrush Core. Zebra's core does not really, uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> Ashley showed up and I completely ignored, hey A-Cubed, <laughs> what's up, welcome to the stream, yay, I'm just, I'm just off in my own world just doing my thing, you know, how's it going, oh, what was I saying, uh, da 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 da, small studios hired generalists only, or, yeah, make coffee for other artists. 
That's yeah, that's somewhat true. Let's see, uh, wild works. Yeah, wild works. Um, yeah, they've they've been around for a while. They've stuck around. That's pretty good, actually. I know a bunch of those. Do you work at Wild Works or are you from, are you from Utah? Here's another way to flatten the bottom of a shoe. Is use this clip curve. Like that. Boom. Excuse me, that's just this clip curve brush. And it, you can just hold down control plus shift and drag a line and it'll squish all the geometry up. I know. I'm sorry, Ashley. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're over there yelling silently. It's me! Oh, you know a few people? Yeah, they make uh, Animal Jam. It's one of my daughter's favorite games of all time. I know several people that work there. A lot of them worked at Avalanche at one point. This looks like a shoe for a little shoe. A little shoe. <laughs> so, what do you, Ashley, what do you think of this? Uh, what do you think of this concept here? Got to get a female's perspective. <laughs> Depends on if you like Jessica Rabbit or not, I guess. Let's see. Yeah, they they did let us show some of the um, Infinity stuff. Actually, they we didn't we we just we've just been showing it. We didn't really ask them either way because it's kind of over. So we're like, yeah, might as well. Guess we we show it till they tell us to stop. Till Mickey shows up at our door. Stop it. So, um, you guys, Ashley is another streamer on the Pixelogic streaming channel. She does some awesome, awesome creatures. So if you're into awesome creatures, you should check it out, even if you're not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can, I can totally picture that. <laughs> Hazanku, Mickey coming in here. Get him, boys! I can't do a good Mickey voice. Another screamer. Yep, screaming, screaming on the channel. Needs less clothing. <laughs> I'll make for an awesome model. <laughs> yeah, this, you know, this is going to be tricky when it starts to get down into these ruffles. I'm probably, uh, I'm probably setting myself up for failure here. I've never done anything like that, so I'm going to have to totally make it up on the other side. <laughs> yeah, Vito. It's going to be a shame. I can do Goofy, but not Mickey. Get him! Oh. <laughs> Gorsh! Those little shoes. Alright. What time we're looking at? 10.43? Too bad. I think I want to pull the top of the shoe up more. Get the transition better. <laughs> oh, man. What do you stream? Hey, Cubed. When's your next one? I always forget.
I haven't stopped by your stream for a while. I've been crazy busy. I need to. I have music tonight. I stole uh, Joe. I saw Joe's. Stole Joe's Spotify royalty free music list. <laughs> so I hope they're truly royalty free. The Pixel Logic's gonna go, hey. Oh, you gotta take off? Alright, thanks for dropping by. You too, Chris. Thank you so much. Hope to see you at the summit. That'll be awesome. Next week canceled this week due to oh, overtime. Oh, I'm sorry. That's no fun. All right. Block out this back. <laughs> what? You can't be trolling now, ZZ Crab. I've answered too many of your questions to be trolling. Here, man. Technical jobs? No way. I have, I, I have, uh, I have some artist friends that work there. Troy and Lane, I used to work there. They're they're streamers on this Pixelogic stream. And they are awesome artists. Awesome, awesome. That is not my sketch. That sketch belongs to uh, Brian Kessinger. He drew that. He works at Disney Feature. He's an amazing, amazing artist. See you later, damn it. <laughs> Gotta love that name. Damn it. Okay, why isn't this smoothing? There must not be enough geometry or something. Oh, my Z intensity is too low. There we go. Move this past and clip it off. Let's see, do I sketch my own reference art? I don't. Typically not. I'm not the best sketch artist on the planet. Some of my friends would call me a liar, but I'm, I'm, I'm really not. I used to sketch all the time, I just don't anymore. So I'm gonna make this skinny. Skinnier. I'd like to sketch more though. I just, I just haven't. I need to get into it. I have too many friends around here that are amazing, amazing sketch artists, and I get intimidated. Like you might have heard of uh, Ryan Wood or Mel Milton. Yeah, those guys I hang out with, and they, 
when they sketch, it's just like flowing, magical, mystical, awesome art flowing out of their pens. And I'm over there going like like a little kid with a crayon. <laughs> Look what I made. <laughs> yeah. Yep, Mel. Mel is amazing. And he's a great guy. Love that guy. He was a CTN with me last year. He's got so much energy. Enough energy for everyone. Davy Jones? Like the real one from the movie? Well, the real one. A high resolution. Because we did a Davy Jones for Disney Infinity. <laughs> I'm sure you're not talking about that one. That was done by, by my, friend, my friend Brad Bollander. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, he's he was really good. I don't know if I have a favorite, because I'm I'm kind of biased when it comes to uh, stylized characters. You know, that's what I do. I do stylized characters. I'm I'm always entertained by realistic ones in movies. Don't get me wrong, but. going on in this area <laughs> what happened oh that's what happened for some reason hey Harry Mandibles how's it going for some reason it put these heels in the same poly group oh boy all right well you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do something tricky Go into my sub tool and duplicate it. And then I'm going to go back in time until that didn't happen. There. Okay. Alright, Build Buddy, thanks for dropping by. I'm about to be done streaming here shortly, so. Thanks for dropping by. Oh, you're Chris. Awesome. Thanks for dropping by, man. How are you liking the course so far? Let's see. I'm going to solo this. Hide these.
new colors. Um, <laughs> dad life is way real. Yes, yes. I'm glad you're liking it. Thank you so much. Do the replays on here show up instantly? Um, typically, they, uh, the Pixel Logic guys will. I think they will uh, just kind of watch it once through to make sure there's no craziness, you know? And then they'll pop it up on their stream. So I don't know what the time, what the turnaround for that is. But it's typically like the next day or something, I think. These feet. I need to put some kind of something on in the front. This guy's going crazy on the flute. Tell you what, when I go to the cinema and see an animated... Oh, Kubo on the, s the two strings. <laughs> so, uh, my friend... I have a, well, a couple friends that work there or have worked there, but my, my good buddy Christopher Wright works there right now as a character animator. And if you look up, if you scroll down on this stream, the monster and the little girl, that's that's one of his sculpts. He's, he's really good. And he is at CTN every year as well. He's awesome. He was he worked at Avalanche for quite a while. And he made it to film. He's one of my friends that made it to film. Okay. They do use a lot of so uh Chris is a he's a CG sculptor. He does not do, well typically he does not do traditional. If you have the if you have the chops, you should apply. Yeah, Kubo is so good. I love the the origami scene. It's absolutely awesome. And uh, my other friend, um, my friend, an acquaintance. He's probably my biggest inspiration at the moment. Is uh, Kent Melton. Look up his stuff. And he works contract for like a. He is really good. Really, really good. Okay, I'm going to run a pinch down the front of these legs. I usually like to do that just to get. That's too much. cross over here to this side. And then smooth it back down just so it catches the light. Alright. Okay. I am pretty happy with this block out of Probably took longer than I wanted it to, but it, it'll work out, I think. I'm probably gonna have to rework this this rib section right here. That's looking a little weird, but I think it'll I think it'll turn out okay. Like I said, I was trying to get that thick Jessica Rabbit thickness on the rib cage to her back, and just that really crazy S curve. Which you don't want to do for animation, but since this typically is 
or this one is not really going to be for animation. I kind of wanted to pose it just a little bit. Okay, and we'll just work it out. Paranorman's great. <laughs> Alright you guys, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. Is there any any last any last questions? I'm just gonna try something here. Say it. Thanks Ashley. Have a good night. Don't work too hard. <laughs> no guarantees. No guarantees. I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> yep. Thanks for showing up again, Blands. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Walter, and thanks for the the chiming in. Yeah, this will be fun. All right. Yep. Thanks, ZZ, for stopping by and all the awesome questions. And I will see you guys next Tuesday, same time, same channel. <laughs> all right. Good night, everyone. Take care. See ya.